A couple guys that came out of there. The there was, same. Yeah, there was a few comics that came out of there. Same area. So, all right. So, let's go. Let's get into it then. How old are you, man? I mean, I don't usually ask people that, but I'm curious so I can resent your success. 32. So, okay. So, you're a young guy. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 this is your first wave of yeah. the big time? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, get, I, mean, I, I would take some issue with the... Uh, with with the term success and big time. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's definitely my my first um, first time I've got I don't know. the I don't, attention. I don't, I don't know the metric. To you. I'm doing this, aren't I? I mean, look, look no, at me no, now. no, no. But that, yeah, that, yeah. This is you've arrived. <laughs> yeah, you've arrived. There you go. That's my only metric for having arrived. I guess I like I don't know. Like I know some of the Fleet Foxes stuff. I don't know uh, your earlier solo work. I'm not going to pretend like I do. Yeah. I like the Father John Misty album a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, once I listened to it like four or five times, you know, I I, yeah. I got the groove. I yeah. know where you're coming from. Well, I get well, the, if you the, don't mind my asking, what what was it around the fourth or fifth time? Do you think what or, or well, the first time you put a record on, like I'm listening it to it like on vinyl. Bomb. Well, it just sort of like all right, you, you, your brain goes like, oh, it's this thing. Yes, right. yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, whatever that thing is mm -hmm. in your head. You hear an acoustic guitar. Well, you hear like all right, there's a a singer songwriter element to it, yeah. and there you know this there seems to be this kind of uh, lo-fi groove going on that that kind of has a country thing going. But I didn't listen to it like contentedly. Yeah. And then I listened to it again, and I'm like, all right, well this guy can really write songs. You know, there, there's clever turns of phrase. He's got some wisdom. He can sing his ass off. All right, I get it. And then the third time is like like oh fuck, Flying Burrito Brothers. Uh, yes. You know, uh, there's a 70s groove here that I think is being honored well. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily consider that the the, the purpose of recorded music to right. me is to make it so that there is no past. Or, right. or like there is, right. there is no concept of the past. Like it's a thing that can be listened to at any given time. The, the arbitrary breakdown of, of decades is uh, just that to me, like arbitrary. Sure. Um, and I don't, considering that we're only like... 40 years or so out from that that's not a long time you know like the ottoman empire was like a long time ago sure we're only like we're not even or, what are we 55 years out yeah. from the beginning of rock and roll in general yeah and as as far as there being at least what i consider to be sort of like a high water mark of, yeah. of uh recording of uh like the criteria of what a good song is like yeah. at, at a different point in time like namely that period of time the criteria was more like can the guy can he play do you have something to say? Is there a hook? Is there something here? Yeah. You know, like... Can I the, dance to it? Yeah, well, I mean, the criteria has become, like, a, a, a little more um, nebulous or something. Well, I uh, think that the sounds uh, of that you are creating are timeless in that. Yeah. In that, like, you know, I wasn't calling upon the references to trivialize or, or, or actually put a time frame on it. But I think that that music, yeah. not unlike, you know, Neil Young's music and some of the other music that was from that era kind of is above and beyond being dated yeah the production I, value of it as well I, i'm not sure i would even know how to make music from uh from this era i don't know what it is i don't i don't know either i i, mean, I don't i don't think i think we're ill-defined now that everything happens live, all at once i think we live i think it's okay to say that we live in like um a 20th century fetishism uh at least in like the indie uh you know, whatever that means, world, there, there is like... Uh, well, there's very little context. It seems like everything can happen all the time, that there's no yeah. there's no sense of linear history anymore. You yeah. know, because everything, all the information just is, you, you just Google it. Yeah. It doesn't need to, I don't know what that means. Who yeah. is that guy? What I, year is that? It doesn't matter. Yeah, I try to stay, I, I try to stay out of the, you know, nostalgia versus, versus not kind of debate, because it, do, it never really seems to go anywhere. But... But you're drawing I, I think, from some folky more. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're a guy with a guitar. Okay, yeah. This is this is where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. So the thing about like listening to it for for the first time, right. And you like, I'm well accustomed with the way that people's eyes glaze over when they see a white guy with an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Like it's um, there's a vernacular. That, yeah. You know, and and you're, you know, nine times out of ten, like, pretty much know what you're in for you're going to get some something that's like sentimental uh confessional um it, it's like kind of the the uh the assumption is that it's uh, innately personal just by virtue of the fact that it's one guy with a song but it might with, be with authentic right it, 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 you might well that's a sticky chance. one who yeah. i mean god knows what what that means i mean aesthetic authenticity yeah. is you know it's like it's almost it's like 
hunting for shadows with a flashlight because the closer you get to making something sound exactly like it did in the 60s or 70s, then the authenticity kind of decreases because right. you know it's like well you're just aping something else but 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 you know but even no matter what the form is no matter what the delivery system is the uh, i think the authentic the emotions of a voice like i'm mm -hmm. a guy that like you know i'm afraid of singing to me it's the most yeah. vulnerable thing that anyone can do right. and like the first time i saw you perform was when we were just away for the weekend and that made me sort of seal the deal I'm like well i, I, I want to talk to you because i kind of got you know what you were doing on stage mm -hmm. and how you were presenting yourself but there, yeah. there, there's something about, like, some people can fake it, but yeah. there's also, if there's a, a real authenticity to the voice, I think uh, singing provides a real vulnerability to it. Yeah. And, and also, yeah. you can hide behind a good song, but I think you're pretty present in what you're doing. Yeah. Where people look for authenticity, um, I, I mean, I think it's, a, I think it's a, a little bit misguided. Yeah. Like, I think authenticity... Um, is is really intangible, like it, it, and it's it's very difficult. To, it's easier to see than it is to describe or mm -hmm. whatever. And a lot of this, I mean, this conversation about authenticity was um, played a big role in you know this shift from the shift into this writing style, which which I arbitrarily deemed Father John Misty. Um, and I. How was I it? had a moment. I had a conversation with yeah. with a friend of mine at this right. thing. We were talking about lyric writing. He was saying he's kind of at this same sort of turning point that I was at, where right. where he he was saying, you know, like when I sit down to write lyrics, there are some some words that just kind of involuntarily come out of my mouth, and one of them is like mountains. Yeah. And I and my friend was saying, I was thinking to myself, how many important things in my life have happened? atop a mountain yeah like almost none yeah you know or or none um and uh i i think for me like i used to i was writing in a in a very kind of impressionistic way this like how dark the rose how you know the viper to my breast sure and mountains have uh you know is a, is a biblical meme it's a poetic sh meme sure yeah. it's it's just kind Going of the mountaintop it, it's squarely in the in in the lexicon of sure. significance yeah and um I came to, to some realization that that in order to to be satisfied, because I'll, I mean, I'll, like, if you want really want to break down what I'm looking for out of writing music, is satisfy you know some some level of satisfaction. Like when you is, hit that uh, lyric, when you see it on the paper, you go, oh, like fuck yeah!" Representing myself, yeah, you know, yeah. and 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 in order to represent myself, um, you know, I think that's why there's some of this. You know, you're talking about like turns of phrase and yeah. humor and and whatever, and and also some like. Um, some decidedly kind of unsexy word like Adderall or something like having that that word in a song it's not a particularly like romantic it's word good. it's pretty good but, but to but in order to represent myself and what I look like and what I think like and whatever I, I have to I be on I, I wanted to well <laughs> no I mean Adderall yes um, but uh I think I realized, like, I, man, I spent my whole life, like, developing this vernacular and this sense of humor and right. this way of speaking right. and this way of thinking and this worldview. And, yeah. And I've never really implemented it into my music. Did you know what it was before, though, necessarily? I mean, you know, sometimes you have to arrive at yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so much easier. The whole be yourself thing is... Yeah, I mean that that's like that's like a life's work. Oh yeah. Know? I mean there there are points in my life where like I never felt quite right in my body and then one day you're like you can own who you are. Yeah. And, and, and confidently. Right. And that was I, I did I had this real I was sitting naked in a tree, um, actually like on a mountain <laughs> and um and I how had, recent how long ago? This was like two years ago or something. You were by yourself, ago, naked in a tree. Yeah, I had gone on this like I, I had gone on this trip, this kind of like dropout trip. But I had this realization yeah. that, um, you know, I was like scratching my head and I was sitting there naked and I was thinking about you were high. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, I mean, I was like, it, I was implementing mushrooms. Yeah, and and I had this this I was kind of laughing at myself uh -huh. and this like this like albino ape sitting in this tree like trying to have heavy thoughts right and um i had this realization that there's this thing that i can do yeah and that i should that i've never done it and that i should just do it mm -hmm. and um which sounds really vague but um more or less everything was kind of birthed out of out of this one instance and i like the music that i wrote before and i understand why i did it but 
like what you're saying about it can be a life's work to, to get around to this part where you can right. be yourself. I mean, um, you know, for I think for a lot of songwriters for a long time, the, the goal is to as accurately as they can embody the songwriter archetype, you know, or like the best that I can be is as close to Neil Young as I can get. Right. And that that's kind of the the criteria for how successful I can be a, as a songwriter or something. <laughs> and that's sort of why I have that, li you know, there's that lyric in the album about, you know, strangling Neil Young down yeah. on the beach and, you know, him saying, kill like, your idol, him saying, like, you're gonna have to kill me. And yeah. it's just, just this thing. It was like this realization where it's like, um, yeah, my my sensibilities are are not. I, I don't know if they. I don't know how how aligned they are with the canon of of singer songwriters. But but fuck singer song. Like I, I don't even right. want. No, you know, I, uh, yeah, I understand. You know, it's, it's at some point. It's you know. It's like it's either going to work this way, or I'm going to spend my life trying to be an approximation. You know. Yeah, um, which a lot of people do, and and sometimes you go in and out of approximation. Yeah. Sometimes, like even when I talk to you, I think in Seattle. There was that feeling that you know we talked briefly about about repetition in and of itself. Mm -hmm. That you, you know when you want to be in the present or you want to you know you know, be as as pure as you can be for yourself. That once you start being, you're expected like, well, play the songs on the record. You know, sure. You, you know, ten yeah. times in, you're like, here's this song again. No, I mean, I'm 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 like more than willing to admit that I'm at you know after a year and a half of touring, like yeah. I'm I'm at that place again you know yeah and, um, but that's the creative place right exactly and and the thing is when you when you um, when you aren't afraid of when when your mandate is is not to adhere to what's working um, then that is like a much easier thing to face and you've and got that freedom now with your th with the label or I your own so. choice um, Oh, just kind of my, I think my own choice. When I think like Definitely. adhere to what's working that, you know, I mean, you're with Sub Pop, which gives you a little more flexibility, I imagine, than being with whatever's left of the oh, major label. Sure, obviously. I mean, yeah. But so no one's doing the thing sort of like, this is a great record, could you do it again, please? Yeah, <laughs> I think, it, yeah, I mean, I think I was, um, by all, you know, by, by all means, like kind of in a place where things were, we're working like yeah. like in a um, in this you know like comfortable sort of comfortable in this like successful band that uh, that afforded me like a, a certain level of fleet foxes yeah yeah I mean that was um, and you were the drummer I, yeah yeah but had you been doing like because you you know you seem to have your shit together as a front man I mean were you just back there on the drums going uh, like oh fuck I gotta get it out yeah not <laughs> not real I mean it wasn't. Um, the the stage is just not I don't I don't think of um, what I do creatively like in terms of the stage like the stage is this uh, promotional inevitability that exists kind of out there on the fringes like it, it really is like the writing uh, and the record like the the um, it's the album or the or the body well the band sounds great like I mean how much are, yeah. I mean these were guys that you put together or how did that come together this, um, I, man, I don't know. It was real. It was real. Pretty fucking sweet, real dude. Scatter shot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I didn't have any capital to put together right. uh, a band. But they were laid a year back, man. Ago. I mean, you yeah, know, they're they, they they're real. You know, they picked their they picked their places. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. I'm comfortable on stage. I've never had a problem. Be I've I've never had a problem being on a stage. Like I, I'm one of those like terrible people who <laughs> you just, just love it it's like yeah. love yeah. me it's not that i love it but there's something that i'm looking for there's always been something that i've been looking for up there like i you know i was like the i was like the kid who ate lunch alone in the music room but then um you know and i went to these like bizarro kind of christian schools and well let's go let's let, i mean let's talk about that i know you talk about it a bit but i mean what kind what like i i don't know what brought you to music but you know what was the household like i know it was religious and that's something I don't, you know, I can't relate to, but I like hearing about. I mean, yeah. what were the expectations? How crazy was it? Um, the the expectations were, um, like, evangelical Christianity as, as it exists, like, kind of within the last 100, yeah. 50 years or something. Sure. In is, our uh, lifetime. Yeah, is is this, um, in, the, in the evangelical sense, is this really intense... Um, emphasis on 
what you're thinking. And and the and uh, with liturgical Christianity, um, it was way more about what what you were doing and and keeping up with these, you know, sacraments or right. or like doing your rituals, be- behavioral things or right. whatever. Evangelical Christianity had, I think, what's kind of started as an admirable uh, something ad- admirable in that it was like, look, it's it's not about doing this or doing that or or whatever. It's about the the way that you think or the way that you you know, like the content of your heart and um, and being good day to day. Yeah, so I mean, something something like that. But then for it's all so convoluted because it's like. Well, it's in how you acted day to day, but it's not entirely uh, in how you act. It's it's all like a you can boil it all down to this uh, saved by faith or saved by works well, kind of thing. Well, Catholicism is saved by works. Protestantism is saved by faith. And um, well, I, my but as far as my household is concerned, it was um, we were all um, just wrapped up in this. Were they in the church, your folks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, in what this capacity? Is, well, in that you know, it was like a three days a week kind of thing, and like Christian. Did your dad have another and, job? Well, no, my dad wasn't in the like he he wasn't in the clergy. So he was like a, a sales engineer for Hewlett Packard. And so you were, um, would you call them born again or? Oh and, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, so they was, were new Christians in a way. It was very well. Where it becomes they a were, vague between Christianity and this sort of self-help community. Yeah, I mean, it's so long ago now. And, and it's, I mean, really, like, my, well, all I want to say, like, I want to scream, like, it, I'm trying to be diplomatic right now, which is just, like, terrible. But it was, it, it, it was not, not an experience that was great. <laughs> I mean, it just wasn't a good experience, you know what I mean? And I, <laughs> I'm like. Too much Jesus. You know, and I'm currently, like, kind of. I mean, I've sort of been estranged from my family for like 10 years. and just In a big way or in a kind of way? In a like talking kind of once a year sort of way. Oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a world. Of, my 20s was just like, fuck you. Sort of a world of anger. And um, I, I think um, with, you know, I, I'm interested in what's going on. My, my folks are kind of like less cartoonish to me now than they were in my 20s. You- and they've had certain realizations of their own. Were you able to source the anger, though? I mean, was it that they couldn't uh, see beyond their own beliefs to acknowledge who you were? I think it was ultimately that they valued, you know, in Christianity, there's just these ideas that, like, you're supposed to, that that God, this invisible sky man, yeah. is supposed to be more important to you than all these things, or, or more real to you than all these things that are, are like, important obviously like empirically more true and um was there a struggle for you early uh, was there a point where you know your belief was shaken to the point where you realized that did something happen as as a kid where you were like you know buying the party line and then you realized like this is sort of you had a conflict of faith or or a, what do they call it a crisis of faith yeah i mean i don't think if you're raised when you're raised with something yeah. from like the from the earliest memory when the earliest memories that you have it's kind of um the the prospect of having like a crisis of faith i I would see that more as something like an adult person like making a conscious decision like after the age of accountability or something right making a decision for themselves right and then having some i mean i my uh my experience with it is still i mean I wish that I had been more kind of like a badass or something, but I yeah. was, I was, um, there was like a lot of anger and a lot of kind of intimidation and manipulation and, um, that you felt in my house. Yeah. Like it, and, and that was, um, like a abuse? really complicated. I mean, it, it was just an angry kind of scene. And, um, a lot of that was kind of fueled by, um, by religion, or, or by, you know, religion was sort of the um, that was the excuse, know, the, the juice, or yeah. whatever. And um, so the anger was sort of like, why can't you be more Christian? Yeah, I, well, it was certainly <laughs> some of the, uh, kind of some of that. You, you, know? you um, asshole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, but but the way that I look at it now yeah. is that you had these like, fi- you know, these 
how many people are in it? Six, you know, people in a boat. You had four um, siblings? Three yeah, siblings? Yeah, I've got four, three younger siblings. Brothers, um, sisters? One younger brother, two younger sisters. Are they, st um, are they all still in? No. no I mean, good. the whole, everybody's kind of, I mean, it's crazy. My parents are, you know, I've, I've started talking to them with it, within, just even within the last few months. Yeah. And some of the things that they are saying to me are just kind of blow my mind, you know. In a good and, way? Yeah, in a good way. Like, just, um, I mean, my parents have sort of, like, dropped out and, like, moved to the beach. And, and these, you know, these people, I, I don't even know. It's like body snatchers <laughs> shit where my mom is, is saying things to me like, I'm just, I really regret valuing the conventions of other people over like you know just she's like i wish i had homeschooled you and uh -huh. like i wish you know and just and let you just be a creative but you know like oh that's sweet, you know so though. i mean yeah so are you able to so take I, that in yeah definitely i'm i don't i don't want to like i i'm i'm kind of bored with 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 my with the with the narrative as it like five years ago we would have gone way into it but um at this stage in the game, I'm I'm too fascinated with like the turn of events that. Um, with that's happening now. Yeah, that, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, me too. And you know, it's um, it was just a it was a really really intense scene. And I and the music that I was making in my twenties yeah. was a mommy doesn't love me, God doesn't love me, uh -huh. like catharsis. Sure. You know, like this sad. major catharsis. Yeah. yeah, it was very sad. And it was because that's the only function that music serves for me. Like. I'm not really a, I'm not really a musician's musician. Like I consider myself like more of a writer or something. Sure. But, but there's no um, I think uh, there's no there's no funk music doesn't serve much of a function for me unless it's cathartic. Was it? Well, I get that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Or it yeah. should be cathartic. It should solve. You know, it should get you some sort of you know movement of emotion yeah you know, that, have you ever read uh like narcissus and goldman no, no. the uh, herman has book is it good yeah it's amazing but it's the the uh just in terms of the function of art like there's um you know you can you can be an artist who is um who carves tiny angels into into door door frames sure. um or um or the alternative which is to be like a purian vagrant who has to like you know, like kill someone before you can make anything decent. Well, that'd be the convention thing. That, that, you yeah. Know, sort of like you can honor the convention. I think I need to kill someone before I can make anything decent. I'm, well, on, the, I'm you, on that side of the face. Well, know, you like, know, you strangled Neil Young at the <laughs> beach, Yeah, exactly. Right? So, exactly. <laughs> so you're I need doing blood. It. You're doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, what's interesting to me is when, when you speak or when you sing or whatever you put out into the world, that you obviously had people that loved it. Right, there was a few, maybe not as many as there are now. Whatever the case, very, very few, yeah. But they were yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Now, when absolutely. you were like, what was your feeling? Just as somebody who thinks like this and who's present, and you know, because I reflect on it as well in terms of audience. Mm -hmm. When you were around the people that respected what you were doing at the time of your darkest uh, sort of expression, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel? I was very suspicious of it. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it was. I mean, I used to bring. I mean, th those shows were. Um, this is before the I, Fleet Foxes. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I was. Um, I mean, I've always had like a, a pretty adversarial relationship to to audiences, and the fact is, I was most of the time I was opening, you know, for for other right, people, which right. is kind of like. I mean, that's like. Oh, so you thought they were just there like a, placating that's like you? Like a hurdle. Yeah. You know, on top. And this of was a in hurdle. Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I was mostly playing. That stuff really. I moved to Seattle when I was 21. Yeah. And um, you know, I was doing um, when I wasn't like, donating plasma and, and whatever. I was playing shows. But you didn't get strung out. No. That wasn't your bag. No. That's. Good. I mean, I wouldn't have known where to find heroin if well, I had you wanted should, to. You should thank that. God for yeah. that one. Yeah. You dodge that bullet. Yeah. Was that ever your bag? I mean, I like I like numbness. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that I haven't. Had no you one know, turns you on to that. You're lucky. I'm dude. sure it's great, but you're lucky. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah, 21 years definitely. old in Seattle, I mean, and none of those old fucking rockers said, "Hey, kid, I think you want to feel good." Yeah, man. I mean, lucky. I, I, I think um, <laughs> just imagining some guy like popping out of a trash can, like sure, a, or a guy in a tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, I like numb. I, I like um, I like numbness. I definitely, you know, I I, I enjoy like. Um, but I mean, am amphetamines or, or or whatever, you know, is like more something that I've kind of an appetite for. But 
Yeah, heroin. I Stay think, up I, and think, man. I think I've missed that. I think yeah. I missed that boat. Good. You know? Good. I, try, try I to actually see. don't know anyone that was on. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't your group. I don't know any. I, I didn't. I, I don't think anyone was. Um, I think there was. Uh, I think I caught on the uh, on the oscillating wave. I caught the like the cautionary. Oh, is after everybody had already kicked in, yeah, or died, I mean, or <laughs> that was a Seattle thing that was like you just missed it. Yeah, I mean this was like ten years after Good. after that thing. By the yeah. time that I got to Seattle, oh, you're lucky. It was like by the time I got to Seattle, it was like yeah. death cap cutie, you right? Know, that, that Oxy's was like and coke, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like <laughs> yeah, these are teddy bears and oh. apple cider, you know, like hard cider. So how did you when you found yourself up there? Now I, I mean, you, I mean, I understand what you're saying now as a guy who's who's sort of in the middle of, of becoming uh, this manifestation of you. But I mean, you must have gone out at some time with with heroes. I mean, you must have had heroes in music that that sort of led you to believe that you could do it or that you uh, respected a lot. Yeah, I was, I was um, so naive when I was growing up. I, 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 because there was almost no cultural yeah. influence. It was, they wouldn't let it in. No, no, it was, um, there was no, what, what was referred to as secular music. Really? Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I think it was like, uh, I mean, it's so embarrassing, but uh, they weren't my rules, but yeah. uh, around like 17 or something, there, there was this new stipulation <laughs> that entered the, um, you know, the, the rule. Yeah. And, um, and it was that, I was allowed to listen to secular music that had a like a, a spiritual message How'd you or something. Out what the fuck I, yeah, I know exactly. It's <laughs> Wait, like were so you nuanced. the deciding factor? Yes, and that's where, where they so they <laughs> that's where they fucked up because they gave because I can uh, yeah. draw I can draw some pretty uh, you know vague right, correlations. Right. Sure. So that's how I discovered Bob Dylan because he had this album because he had Blood on uh, uh, Slow Train Coming. Sure. Um, and uh, so once, so so then then I bought that album. I like um, that was your first album purchase. Probably? Yeah, I established that Bob Dylan was, was Christian. like a Christian artist, and then um, and that was kind of like. But they uh, didn't know. I mean, would they grow up in a bubble? They didn't. They, your parents didn't have any sort of. I mean, uh, place to put Bob Dylan in their personal history. I don't know what they. I think as long as it wasn't i think the aesthetics of the music made it made it sort of like uh, it, it wasn't on the radar or something well they were fanatics yeah well yeah. i mean they they were they were um they were oppressive De at least like culturally like like kind of oppressive probably frightened the fright frightened themselves yeah i mean i don't think they could have appreciated how um what a death sentence like telling a kid who loves music in the way that I loved music? I don't think they could appreciate like what a death sentence that was. That I it like was not from. allowed to yeah. listen to to music or whatever. And that you know at that age, like that's you know grounds for patricide or something you know, sure. in in my view. So, but I mean, I was um, you know I had to I used to have to I would listen to the you know modern rock radio like under my blanket with the with the stereo pressed up against my ear and then in the morning I would have to make sure to change the <laughs> dial back to like the <laughs> religious you know, station like pro life talk radio station oh, shit. and but I mean of course occasionally I would forget to do that and it would be this whole thing like they would check you know that really um, yeah but oh, um, I'm sorry I, think, I, I mean I think that like around the time of Bob Dylan there were like bigger problems around the house I think the, the problems had become larger in nature than the curation of music so it kind of went under the <laughs> your siblings were younger yeah uh, yeah they were younger yeah and they provided definitely provided it like a little bit of a smoke screen um you know pornography kind of entered the scene and that you know became kind of the new um uh, on whose know. part who had the pornography but it was just like um it was i think it was uh just like uh, the app with the advent of the internet um oh, oh so they were combined right, right. With, like adolescent so, uh -huh. you know, yeah. so all this to say bob dylan uh he made it bob under the dylan radar snuck it in yeah. snuck into bed yeah yeah and um and i would let him, i would let him out of the first floor window <laughs> before my parents got up for work and uh so all that to say my influence came or or the the kind of contemporary influence was i heard um Damien Gerardo, who's like a Seattle singer-songwriter, around the same time, and I was—I didn't actually realize, or, or I hadn't really put it together in my mind that 
this music that Bob Dylan was making was something that could still be done today, like this this kind of. I mean, I was just obsessed with um, that you could take a guitar and, and a vocal and do this thing with it. Did you like you know? his language? Did you like the way? Yeah, he I mean, it was it was the whole. Pretty amazing. It was the whole it? thing. Yeah. Can't, like it, it, like sometimes you listen to Dylan, you're like. Holy I don't know what it is. I mean, I know it's, it's so. It's like everybody, everybody's got that point of reference, or, or I mean, any anybody who kind of does vaguely what I do has that point of reference. Well, a lot of people who know, don't do I mean, it either are stunned. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's one of those things that really can't be hackneyed because you know every time you go back to it, you're still like, how, yeah. who, how is this delivered to this guy? And that's an interesting point in in, in that I think. When you when you first hear Bob Dylan, yeah, you associate why he's great, or, or you attribute why he's great to the sound that's coming out. Mm -hmm. But what's really communicating is the, this, like, uh, I mean, um, Allen Ginsberg just described it as this, like, his body became a solid pillar of air, and <laughs> and, um, and and it's this kind of this intangible. Thing that's happening and you just think like oh, this guy is like a real this i mean language is going to fail me but it's like it's this intangible thing i'm not sure it's i'm not it's it's not like he's I mean, a the, vessel the chords are great yeah um the melodies are great um but the poetry but that vessel. isn't but a lot of there are a lot of good yeah, chords right, a lot of sure. good voices or whatever um so i think it was his original the, the originality is such a hurdle because to I mean, it's a real feat to to be borrowing so heavily from, um, you know, the I mean, his idols, and still coming across as this like a uh, supernaturally like original, singular, individual person. And I think that's what was really interesting to me about the idiom of guitar and voice. What what was song kills you? Um, I mean, around that time, it was like. Boots of Spanish leather with God on our, I mean, with God on our side just blew my fucking mind, you know, of course, like given where I was. <laughs> yeah. And just this brazenness, yeah. you know? And and that's a lot of brazenness with a with not a whole lot of kind of sonic you know, it's right. not visceral. It's, it's not intimate. like Yeah, I was so used to um, to visceral things or visceral ideas or messages or yeah. whatever being backed up by a equally visceral Aesthetic or something yeah. like screen, you know, like like hard rock. What happened was that you realized that with just a guitar and just a voice, that that transcendence was possible in a way. Yeah, it was like if you t like breaking this thing. It was like I was amazed at this magic trick that you could break down, you know, musically down to this like really primal, like the the fewest number of moving parts. Yeah, and the and the effect was so much more, you know, like. Uh, Poignant than right. anything I had sure. heard with drums, and you right. know, and that's when I, st I, I like, kind of stopped playing drums and started playing acoustic guitar and, and whatever because it was just this, uh, I mean, it was, this it was incredible. It, it seemed pure, and I think that yeah. com coming back around to what you were calling assumptions about the singer songwriter, those yeah. are so it's sort of a hackneyed stereotype, but when you bring it back down to just sort of like I'm a guy with a guitar yeah. then it's a it, that that is a pure expression of, of what you can do as a songwriter in a way. yeah and I, I think I mean what I've enjoyed about this whole in the first few tours I did you know with the Father John Misty material uh, was just me and an, and an acoustic guitar and I, I loved getting up there and um, you know everyone like kind of sits down cross-legged and their eyes glaze over and, and you start like playing the G chord and that but then by the time the second line came out of my mouth you could see people like go, like what the fuck is going on here you know and that like just as far as the lyrics um were way outside the the, the songwriter idiom like there was nothing about um you know train tracks or you know like listing off state names or i mean if you you know you know if you look at like I mean, if you listen to, you, can, is there more of that list? Guy? Oh yeah, oh, okay. There's there's a lot. I mean, especially now in the neo, what's what's called you know neo folk or like yeah. Lumineers or Mumford yeah. and Sons and all that yeah. shit. It's just, there's a lot of shit about like um, your brother's wisdom. You, like you hear that a lot. Um, I don't know. And that I mean, I don't want to go too off topic, but that shit. It's not like, off topic. Um, then what you're talking you about know, is just, a is a hackneyed yeah, um, just structurally mode. those songs. 
compositionally, those songs by those bands bear more of a resemblance to like Journey than they do to like you know a folk song or something. I refuse to accept that that music is um, is the like the natural evolutionary step uh, in you know folk music or, or whatever. Well, I think that when you talk about like because I, I think Just pure artifice, right? But because I think what happened was like Dylan turned folk on its head. And then, mm-hmm. you know, infused it with a, a personal lyricism and a poetic intent that yeah. no one could ever fucking imagine. He was the Norman Mailer. Right. Like I, I, he, in but, that, then you, but then you get someone who strips it down, yeah. like Leonard Cohen or Nick Drake, and then you see that there's a personal poetry available that can yeah. have universal meaning. Yeah, and, and those people are the best case scenario yeah. of... So, here, I mean, this ha- and this happens with every art form. Like, and I'm been really interested in I've been reading a lot of Norman Mailer lately and I've been that's interesting reading this. he's a he's a monster cock writer oh yeah, yeah no yeah. It, the cock the cock <laughs> thing like uh, the last like and I actually just read beautiful losers um, and uh, I really I realized that all my favorite like the only books that I like have the word cock in them. Uh-huh. like all, they all have to pass the cock test you like, read, a lot, uh, like there's that all a lot of those Brodigan, 70s, right? Brodigan, Brodigan passes Philip the Roth. cock test Philip Roth passes the cock. He's got huge neurotic Jewish cock. Big human, fan. Big hu- fan. Human stain. Um, yeah, but did you ever read Sabbath Theater? No. About the the, the bitter uh, radical puppeteer. No. It's fucking crazy. Amazing. It's crazy, man. But those guys in the seventies could, you know, they, they the literary cock of those dudes was huge. Yeah. 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 The Norman Mailer thing, or or the. The, what do you the, like about him, though? Because he's a persona as well. well. He, yeah, well, how it, I mean, I, I can talk about him specifically. Like, like, what I mean about just in, in terms of how he relates to um, Mumford & Sons is that, um, like, there's a moment in any uh, mode of expression or, or, like, or particular aesthetic. And, like, Dylan took folk music, which was about the collective, which was about like a better world for mankind. Yeah, that was like the express function. Voice of, of the underdog music. too. Yeah, it was this collective thing, and turned it into this me thing, you know, which is like this is how I feel, and yeah. this is my worldview, and this is you know what I think about yeah. things. Yeah, which was you know heresy at the time, and um, Norman Mailer did that for intellectualism um, prior to um, you know like Barbary Shore and Deer Park and. Uh, the, like the post naked and the dead thing yeah um, the, the the intellectual culture in America was based around these groups you know which I think um, in some way is like very very valuable like because people are held accountable the best ideas rise to the top and um, going maverick or something it was really just evidence of the fact that like your ideas weren't very good and you couldn't get anybody on board and Norman Mailer did the, you know, like, he condemned, like, the, the communist intellectual movement in America, and uh, he took everything into this, like, me, me, me territory, which I, which you have to applaud in the short term, like, in the same thing with Dylan, like, you have to applaud, that's, like, his, their, your personal creative mandate. Right. But from that, you get the fucking hippie shit, um, you get, uh, like, Mumford and Sons, you get that you can't that you get this whole you get this whole culture that is then born after that, like the repercussions you can't control, and it's this catch twenty two where like you cannot deny the that person that ge- like a genius who is going to have an impact on the culture is right just because to, the, the to do the, what he wants to do just because the, the morons uh, uh took it and these, ran with it yeah but then these concentric circles start spinning out and then before you know it the only integrity only looks like uh doing like whatever you want to do and, and anyone i mean you can go out onto the street and like uh i mean that's that's that that's the like in the hegemony as it exists today yeah doing what you think is right like doing things for you because you want to do them because because it's your experience, um, et cetera, is um, is like the highest good. Yeah, know? yeah, but I mean, but that you know that separates that becomes a, a cultural pipe, pop psychology movement, and we're talking about the creativity of these artists who yeah. took the, who had the courage to do that initially. I mean, and, but what do you think of like the Grateful Dead? Um, I mean, I love the Grateful. Dead. Of course, you got yeah. to right. Yeah, I mean, I, and I also think... the hippie thing was also uh, uh, the wave crashing of the beatnik thing, yeah. and also you know I think Dylan took a lot of the beatnik thing and ran with that. Yeah, when 
when geniuses yeah. do their own thing, it's the, fucking great. The rare, the, but yeah. not everybody it's can do that That's to right. that effect. Of you course know? not. And 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 you know, like the geniuses are doing things because they want to do them, and the non-geniuses are doing them because that genius did it. That's right. And geniuses do them because they usually they don't have a choice. Yeah, they, they, they're compelled. Yeah, because they're bored. They're right. they're because yeah. they're under uh, they're underwhelmed by by things going on around them, and uh, and that. The ability to kind of be on the cusp of that, you ha you have to be like pretty prescient. You have it to sounds like though to me that like you know even in talking to you briefly at the sub pop thing that at some point you had a, you know a fairly tangible personal fucking like mind blow up mm -hmm. in terms of like you know where you were at in your life you know, what you were doing creatively. I mean, to change your name and also to be, and I know you're very self-aware and a little, uh, you, you know, uh, sort of volatile. Mm -hmm. I, and I only know that because, like, I, I tried to get your Twitter name and you're like, oh, no, I'm done with that. That, <laughs> that, that, that to me reveals somebody who's like, I'm going to erase that part of the identity. is not functioning anymore. Here's what, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But you know, but you do that. You check yeah. yourself. You're like, well, this seems like a good idea. And then, like, you know, what right. the fuck was I thinking? And yeah. uh, what, why do I need to put that? Like, there's a constant questioning going on. So you're in a band, the Fleet Foxes, which became sort of you know, a mainstay among a certain crew of people early mm -hmm. on. Uh, you know, with there was a there was a sound happening. Robin Robin was pretty out on his own thing. And yeah, I, and I also don't include. You know, I think Robin. Robin had like a, like a great thing going that 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 other people rightfully wanted to emulate but just couldn't do it because they're not Robin. Right. And, and he's like he he really that that thing really I mean it, he, that thing really kind of came out of nowhere, I think. How did you um, get aligned with that though? You were doing your sad music and and fighting your parents and God. <laughs> and <laughs> well, I joined Fleet Foxes when I was 9 and uh <laughs> yeah. Um I mean that was um I got involved because uh, their it didn't work out with their original drummer, and I um, can sing and can play drums and had a beard, and uh, was like <laughs> more, in. more or less like yeah. genetically engineered to yeah. be in that band. <laughs> yeah, and um, like you know I was working construction at the time, and I think it was it was kind of the first. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was I was pretty I was pretty beat down around that time, and and I'm afforded the luxury of uh, parsing, you know, like like the like the type of things we're talking about as far as um, creativity and and, but beat and down integrity, how? and just by working construction. What what other jobs did you have? I mean, uh, like, a dishwash. I mean, dishwasher, uh, musician job, plasma. Oh, yeah. Um, a bakery. That must have been nice. The bakery's nice. I loved the bakery. Yeah, and I used to like record in there. And so, I mean, you, you play music in the bakery after hours, kind of deal. Well, I'd have to be there at like four thirty, so I would go. I would, you know, like drink until two, and then like take the bus over and and like record for a couple hours, and then start working. Working the dough. Yeah, were you doing the? the were you working the dough? Figuratively and literally. No, but that's yeah. a, a bit like I like food work, don't you? Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, put your hands. Yeah, in no, the dough. I I love. Um, anything that, anything where there, where you can see the, uh, where, where there's like a, an obvious kind of cause and effect Love it. to your job. I, at, I can, look I can, at my muffins. Those are the kind of jobs I can do, which is why dishwashing is my favorite job. Yeah. And, um, they're clean. Yeah. Look, it was dirty. <laughs> now it's clean. I'm the best. And I get that feeling even when I'm just putting stuff in a washing machine. Yeah. Like when I take stuff out of a washer, I'm like, look what I did. Yeah. I, okay. but I can't work towards some greater, like, um, it has to be immediate goal or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, all to say that, like, my concerns were, like, far less ephemeral around that time. Yeah. It's just like, yes, please, anything other than yeah. this, dear God. Where's the drum set? Yeah. yeah. And um, and I also really liked the band, and the dudes were friends of mine, and so it was, like, a network. But um, I do think that I overestimated my interest in being, like, a drum. Because you were actually a, 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 a singer. You were a guy who wrote his own stuff, and yeah. sat there with a guitar and sang. Yeah, and I thought... You know, my um, I thought, oh, this is great. Like I can do this, and then I can make my own music that no one likes um, in my spare time. Yeah. But um, you know, there's uh, I, I think after after a year or so of that, 
I started to realize that um, that I was a total narcissist and that I'm really only interested in, um, in not, not necessarily self-centered. But, but the the only thing I, I was having this conversation with someone the other day about like the, the, how uh, taboo the word selfish is, but. Um, and, and uh, narcissist I, I, is also over you. Yeah, narcissism is when there's narcissism and then there's solip solipism. Solipsism? Well, narcissism is really is solipsist. Pathological or? narcissism is frightful. Yeah. yeah, being narcissistic is usually just being self-centered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, uh, I, I just realized that um, I have to be working uh, for for my own uh, vision. You know, like, I'm a shitty band member. Yeah. I'm a good band member. Yeah. You know? I'm like better at being, I was like better at, better at, I was less shitty at being like, you know, my own, my own thing. Well, how did that um, manifest itself? Being oh, a shitty just band all, it's just like, <laughs> grumpiness. For throwing drumsticks? Know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I, I was, I, I wasn't a total tyrant, but I was just like really unhappy. And, I, and did you bring and everyone I, else down? I mean, I think we were all bringing one another down. Yeah. I, I don't think, I, I think it would have been difficult to parse where the um, Jacob's Ladder of bringing down like, the band. band and ended. Yeah. Are you guys friends now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So um, whatever happened, it was it worked out? Yeah. I mean, it, I think, yeah. I mean, it's fine. You know, like, it's, 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 it's music. Um. Did the time in that band influence you in a positive way, though? I mean, in the big picture. I think it helped clarify certain certain things. For me. Um, the the whole the whole meltdown thing was very much based in uh, the fact that I had pretty much spent the last twelve years like obsessing over Josh Tillman, the songwriter, the singer songwriter, and and failing to recognize that I was anything outside of, like that my value, my self-worth was um, entirely tethered to my success or lack thereof um, as, a, as a songwriter or, or as a you know, musician or something. Is this, um, I was really afraid to, I think very, really afraid to face myself um, and, and what I actually was for a long time, just wanted to be the Southern thing, just be the Southern thing. And, um, but this one, you were a drummer, so... I mean, no, this is like, you know, at started, starting at age okay. 20, you know, okay. something like... Yeah. I mean, I spent my 22nd birthday under, under a blanket, like, crying, because Brian Wilson had made head sounds when he was 22. And, um... So you, had, you were hard on It's just, like, obsession. Right. You know? Why um, haven't I done my masterpiece? Like, yeah, it was, it was just... You know, in rock, I mean, even by the time I joined Food Box, I was like 150 in rock years, you know, like I was like 27 or 28 or something. So you thought your whole, it was all getting away from you. You thought it was all getting away from you. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it was, um, I mean, it wasn't that I was a, it wasn't so much this, this, it wasn't so much that I'd failed, it was that my failure meant that I was worthless. You know, or something. Well, there becomes like as an artist. There is a distinction. Well, yeah, but as an artist, uh, it, you know, there are there are certain people you use as a barometer for your success, and you know, if yeah. you respect geniuses and you respect, you know, masterpieces, there's that part of you. But, but the sad part is one thing because you were doing the work, but there's also the other part of not just achieving what you want to as a person, but that realization that when you live in Seattle or you're in a band long enough, you see the dudes who are 45. Yeah. and did not make the cut Seriously. and are still out there trying to do it yeah. and then that part of you that thinks like I can't be that guy yeah some of me wanted to be like I, I, my what I wanted was so uh, I mean I wanted to be like a like for a long time I I wanted to there, there was just a whole kind of like a echelon of songwriters like Mark Lanigan or Richard Buckner yeah um, in some respect like you know Damien um or and you need to go back further, like Town Van Sand or yeah. Nick Drake or, or whatever, like these guys who just who operated on the fringes and, and they can't say you know you can't really say that they had uh, I think most of those people feel somewhat 
thwarted or, or, or something. But to some but, of them feel but, dead. But the prize for those guys is that there are little shit kickers like me out there who think that they are like gods among us. Yeah. You know. Right. And that's like the that is the, the payoff. And I think that that was. I mean, when I was really young, I mean, it's so embarrassing to admit all this shit. But you know, like when, when I was. Um, in my like early 20s like that was the height that was like the height of what you um, what what I could be and I think that that was the you know the beginning of to be an on the fringes genius you know yeah. respected by the few but, but appreciated but that was, by history but that's not me right like the, and, and I well, think and I think that that was sort of the, yeah exactly yeah. and I think that that was sort of part of the real and part of the strangling Neil Young shit or whatever is just this like um, I, I I don't I don't know if I'm that guy, and I don't, uh, and I don't. Uh, a p- part of it is just outgrowing your uh, the appetites of your youth. Or but also, but also, it has to do with what we were talking about before. You can't manufacture that guy. No, like you're gonna see. I think what you're well, saying. Well, and I wasn't trying to manufacture it, but I, but I, but I do see this. But I did see this thing in me where it's like, at best, because I didn't have to try very hard to manufacture. My my sensibilities and everything were 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 aligned, and it was just, and I was drawn those people in the first place right. because I saw you know whatever like myself and what I do in them but um but I think I was just short selling you know it's like sh- short selling myself or something I, I have this different I really feel like what I'm doing now musically um you know when I played the this record for people for the first time yeah. people who have heard all you know 25 of my Jay Tillman album yeah um the the thing that everybody kept saying was like this sounds like you Right, you know? right, and that was um, I. I want. I really wanted people to hear my doom and gloom music, or, or or my like, you know, this. I mean, this music that I was making, and say like, this is. It sounds like you, you tortured, yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. Right. you know, like right. a drunken wizard. Um, the affectation, and, uh, yeah, yeah, but but it's this self curation. That, right. that had to go, and and that's what a lot of what this was about. So I, I mean, I had this 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 realization where it's like Josh Tillman is not did not come out of the womb like a song like a singer songwriter. There is a man here, yeah, and um, that that person has to be reckoned with, and and that was part of the leaving Seattle and writing the this novel that's in the album. Um, and kind of doing this like Jungian style self uh, mythol. I wrote this like kind of huge self mythology of uh, Father John. No, of me. I mean, Father John Misty. There was no and it shall be named uh, yeah. moment. That yeah. was like me sitting in a bathrobe and uh, my roommate at the time being like, "What are you gonna call this thing?" And me being like, "Well, I don't think it's gonna be Jay Tillman." He's like, "What do you want to call it?" And I was like. Father John Misty, and he was like, "No," and I was <laughs> like, like, "Yes," <laughs> because it's. I mean, it's just the 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 whole the whole like function of or purpose of that name is that it's just some dumb shit that I would call myself. Like it's my, but my sense of humor, and it looks hilarious on a marquee. Like it looks like a yeah, no, Christian it, uh, science when, puppet when, show. When people started bothering me to have you on, I was yeah. like, "Is this a novelty?" Yet? Like right. you know, like and then I look you up and I saw a picture. I'd even listen to music. I'm like, "What is this dude doing?" Right, yeah, right. And that what is because this? I get off on that. What ba- is this on, gimmick? On baffling people. Like that's I'm into that shit. Sure, know? but 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 the music does not. It doesn't play that way. Uh, <laughs> you you yeah. know, and Dima, who did your cover art, he's done a lot of art for oh, me. Yeah, he's a genius. Right. Absolutely. So, but let's talk about this self mythologizing because like y- y- you felt that after all your aspirations and, and all your hero worship and all your desire to be in the pantheon of these you know these drunken wizards and these poets and these yeah. lost artists somehow broke away but yet you still took something from uh, the Dylan playbook or something from an artistic playbook where you're like if I'm going to start as as wide open if I'm going to if I'm going to be born again mm-hmm. then then I must make a story well the book that's at it's in that's that's in the Th- this was not related to when I wrote that I had no plans of none of these songs were written right I had no plans of doing this thing the thought of picking up an acoustic guitar like made me nauseous yeah and, uh, at the time and um, 
the idea, and, and when I say self-mythology, anytime you truncate your life story at, or, or cure, and curate it, and, right. and if you, you know, if you read it, it's, it's, it's funny, it's deeply absurd, it's like highly fictionalized, um, it's just pure liberty. Um, it, uh, that was, Selective that memory. was what, that was what I keep, that's what I've been saying with this thing, what part of the narrative is really that, like, as I was writing this book, um, I, I kind of saw my, I, I saw myself, like, I had all this birth to, uh, be funny, to be tragic, I had way more words to, to work with, um, like it's a completely different you had a little medium. distance too yeah it's a completely different medium and I didn't give a shit if it was good or not right like it did not matter I did not want to be like a great novelist I did not I there was no um, lust for success what compelled you to write it just that I man I don't know I mean I um, I, I think a lot of it was just you know sometimes you're looking for something before you really conscious of the fact that you're that, looking for it or not. Isn't that amazing about writing that like it, it, like if you fight it, even if you fight it, but once you get into the groove of it and you start writing, it, it you do discover it. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. fucking amazing. Yeah, I started well, I had this, the book start I had this idea because I had gone on this I had gone on this, like, I actually started writing it like a couple hours after the naked in the tree thing. I was in Big Sur. That was the beginning. Yeah, and I came, I came back down, and I just, and I started writing a, um, like a sales pitch for a, um, like existential video game called Bed Bug Mountain, uh -huh. and um, I was s sort of making fun of what I had just been doing, which was like. You know, like looking for meaning or, or whatever on a mountain. Because you're, all, you're on was, shrooms. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. thought it was funny. Yeah. You know, and and so I started kind of writing about the uh, this, you know, the nature of, um, you know, just how like uh, selfish and or, or the way the basically the way the human beings commodify nature. Yeah. And, and we look at a mountain and we think that it's little else than a symbol for like distinctly male character traits of like uh -huh. perseverance and uh -huh. uh, you know whatever and I, you know it's just like just Grand, really yeah. having fun yeah. doing it yeah and when i got about 30 pages in i was like well is it a sh maybe it's a short story and then by the time i got 60 pages in i was like uh, maybe it's a book and then it just kept it kept going and going um and uh I just I, I I recognized myself in it. Like my like my my background was in it. My sense of humor was in it. My personal history was in it. My philosophy, you know, was in it. So you actually found yourself. In yeah, this, in yeah, this writing. And, it, and and it was in this like you know like artifact, this tangible thing. Like oh, here Here's it is. Tom Paper. And I made I made this, and it it actually sounds like me. And and that um, after that. You know, it's like, well, here's my here's my narrative voice. Yeah. Like, this is my this is what I sound like. Um, is there? It's like a Bible of you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and wait, how much how much was it? How much mushrooms were you doing? Um, I mean, around that time, it was uh, like pretty heroic, dosey, like every every few days or yeah. something, and then kind of just nibbling on stuff in between. What did you just like the? What what, what did you? How much do you attribute to that? What do you get out of that? You get well, jangly, you get like, you know, you sort think, of shifts the perspective. Yeah, I mean, mushroom, you know, this the conversation about mushrooms, yeah. like, Ameri ge the, generally people lump all, you, you know, mushrooms in with like, well, they're drugs, and mm. drugs are like cocaine, weed, yeah. heroin, yeah. mushrooms, mm. speed, whatever, and, um, I don't know, there's some, I mean, I, I can't explain it. I've read some, you know, I've read, like, Terrence McKenna stuff. Um, I mean, but I mean, you know, Aldous Huxley, John Lennon, like... Yeah, these things oscillate at a different speed, I think. Yeah, they do, and, and at least I can only speak for what effect they had on me. That's and, all, yeah. and, and the effect, the, the effect that they had on me was um, to laugh. Pretty much, and, make you and, and I giddy. think a lot of people, um, what when you have, I think that a lot of people assume that when you have like a, 
like for lack of a better word a spiritual experience yeah. or a moment of insight or something the appropriate response is this kind of sober uh, you know moment <laughs> yeah. of like yeah. solemnity or yeah. something yeah. and I think and then for me think. mushrooms was the, like this reinforcement realization of the fact that I have always like laughed in the face of like you know that my sense I, I, I grew up around these like big, heavy, important ideas that were supposed to inspire awe and devotion and uh, obedience and, and whatever. And my my instinct around those things was always like satire and laughter and you know mischief and and to undermine it and 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 whatever. And mushrooms, um, you know, it's like I would was laughing at myself you know it's just like laughing and you needed the to. absurdity yeah. yeah i very much needed that at that time i i think that they're like i, I find them very instructful did you find that like because you seem like a guy that like you, you know, if you let your head get away with you, you you know you might get you know self-important yeah i mean i've been accused of that <laughs> and i imagine yeah. that that like mushrooms at the right time probably took a big burden off your back and enables you to not take yourself so fucking seriously. Yeah, I think that that was, um, I think that it, it was like a little nudge in the direction of, um, you've been looking over here <laughs> yeah. for purpose and inspiration for a really long time. <laughs> maybe that's really funny, you know? And you, you know, like maybe it's a, maybe that's like a huge joke that you've yeah, been right, like right. looking over in this little corner for so long while all this other shit, like, well, all these really obvious things about you have all been over here, like completely unexplored for so long. And it, it's also important to note that like my musical, my, uh, you know, like inspiration or talent at, at a songwriter has moved at a different clip than my personal growth or, or whatever. And like uh, even when I was doing these Jay Tillman shows, yeah. you know, I'd do a song do a couple songs and then I would like kinda like tell a joke or, or like whatever it like or just talk and and um, those in between song moments people would kind of like light up and like and laugh and be engaged and whatever. They're probably and relieved. Would, and then I would go back to a song yeah. and then they would glaze back over and I had this awful fucking realization at some point that I was better at the in, in between song stuff than I was at the song <laughs> stuff itself and it was I mean that was brutal it was like what do I do with this information like I, I'm not a, like a, a comic by trade or, or whatever or like what what I still want to sing I still want to but, yeah, but I'm a journeyman right but it seems to me that like ultimately what you're talking about is you'd gotten into this groove where you're taking yourself you know, pretty fucking seriously, and there was an effect that you were trying to get with your art and with your expression, yeah. and and that became heavy, and you know, honoring that thing was draining you. Mm -hmm. So like, it, whatever you made the break from the foxes and you know, started to sort of explore your mind and take the mushrooms, it lightened the load a little bit and gave you some space. Yeah, yeah, mushrooms like, um, you know, it uh, it was uh, it was a nice little. Um, it was, it was nice that that came along at the time that it did. Anytime you even mention that that was involved, uh, it ends up kind of taking up a lot of space in the discussion. Well, and, that's because um, people read into it, not unlike Dylan right. or not unlike a guy with a guitar. They, you know, yeah. they, they're all, yeah. This has been some, you know, I don't do any more drugs than most of my contemporaries, you know. Um, and they're all pretty, it's all pretty soft. Yeah. Kind of social, whatever shit. But with... With the music, um, I'm interested. The fact that I am interested in including like all of my humanity or everything, everything, putting everything into the songs, like that means that I want those like drugs to be in there. I want sex to be in like whatever sex there is in there. Uh, relig my I want religion to be in there. Sure. I want everything to be in there. Um, unfortunately, drugs take up a lot of real estate in people's minds. So just when they hear that, when they see a reference to it, whatever, they assume that by virtue of being there, it's so important to you that it has to be. But I mean, I'm just interested in including in, in including like real so just one of the things. details from it. It's sure. just one of the things. It's yeah, one yeah. of many things. You yeah, know? you move through it. Yeah. yeah it and seems like people want to define people by that. 
Yeah, or that... Yeah, I mean, there's always... I mean, there's, uh... There's an undercurrent of, of contempt. For, Judgment. Yeah. He's for, a drug guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, how do you... Like, what's the... You know, and, and people also have this, like, pretty cartoonish idea of, of its involvement and in that it's like, you know, I, I like eat a bunch of shrooms and then sit down with a guitar and, and write these weird songs and but I mean I, I don't know I mean I, I uh, but Every, everything becomes a tool and I think people don't understand it because they they, they also want to mythologize somebody they like or that they don't like yeah. you know, they want to you know they want to box people in I mean at any given point in time like you know these great examples of even somebody like Robert Crumb who was you know was not a drug mm -hmm. guy and then he yeah. takes acid, and then it just breaks open this fucking space in his brain. Right. And he didn't get the feeling that he spent his life doing acid right. or anything else. It just, it, it, it gave him some more real estate. Yeah, and that's not, you know, at mushrooms, the, gr the great thing about mushrooms is that they do not have a uniform effect. Like, yeah. cocaine, anybody, when you are on cocaine, cocaine takes, o like, you yeah, know, cocaine has a uniform you effect. You become it, cocaine. It will destroy your life. Yeah, like you... Right. <laughs> yeah, that is I, the, I have this thing where it's like, give me five days and cocaine, I will ruin my life. Yeah, like, yeah. I could ruin yeah. my life in five days. Oh, like absolutely. five days from now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, acid or mushrooms, very different story. Like, it, you, you know, it's, um, it's a... Con it's, you know, with that, I don't, I don't want to sound like... Or dig myself even deeper, but it is a dialogue, you know, between you and this, you know, whatever it is, like Martian spore. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, what I really fucking hate is when you hear squares do this whole, oh, I'm so dark already, I have so, so many problems already, like I just, I don't think that'd be a good <laughs> idea or whatever. It's like, that means you probably should face some things like and this is like you can, yeah, a yeah. tool to, but, but then you, you know. have to ask yourself well do i want to hang out with that person while they face these things i mean <laughs> no, certainly not yeah. <laughs> you, 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 i have yeah. seen plenty of people that were tightly wrapped you know get on a hallucinogen and then yeah. just fucking come unraveled completely True. yeah and I there's mean, no I'm, benefit to it whatsoever <laughs> no right 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 i'm just being <laughs> delib you know no I, no i, I know I, what you I, mean it's yeah, a fear but, thing but i think I, I think that um yeah there's um yeah, there. It's work, you know. Like it really is work, and and the work thing is typically more associated with like ayahuasca or something like that. That's well. There's like yeah. Real. If you're gonna go the the ritual route where you, you know there are more ancient rituals yeah, to deliver into like secular to me. Like, yeah, no, I, I I think you're right. I yeah. think that you know you can sort of you know gauge how much you want and once you get the hang of the. You know, w you know how much it will take to get here. Maybe you don't yeah. want to go all the way there, but you just want to get a little jangly, so you just go here yeah. and you can kind of percolate I, along. I was not into the ayahuasca thing particularly. It's kind of, it's kind of a violent it's, trip, right? I mean, it's, well, you know, it's some just a whole, puking involved. And yeah, the trip itself is, you know, was good, and it is like the sort of thing where it's like as much as you put into it, you, you get out or whatever. But just like kind of the culture around it, I was just like really joking. Like I'm sitting with like. 12 people in like fairy t shirts, and you're, you know. <laughs> Can I just do this in my car? Yeah, so, which I ended up doing. Like, I ended up like, <laughs> I gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> like, running into the woods. And, um, and I ran in, and I went and found my van. And I was like, I gotta change my shirt. And I looked in my van, and there was like this Dallas Cowboys t shirt in there that I'd never seen before. And I put it on, and then I wore it for the next two years. <laughs> That's what you brought back. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, this is this is what saved me. Yeah. This is what brought me back. Yeah. Well, you want to play some songs? Yeah. I